So check this out. This is a muscle, both in the macro and the micro context. Basically, muscle tissue is fiber, inside bundles, inside bundles of fiber, inside bundles of fiber, inside bundles of fiber. You can kind of think of it like, um, like a rigging strap or a rope or something like that, where there's like stitching and knitting and things of that nature. Now, there's two things going on there. Number one, the damage in of itself is going to trigger the immune response to repair it. And then number two, how we specifically cause that damage is going to trigger another response from the nuclei in our cells to send the correct activity specific instructions for the rebuilding process. So for instance, if you do like heavy triples, right, in a lift, squat, bench, whatever, okay, your nuclei will instruct the repair process to rebuild those damaged muscles more amenable to triples. This is part of what makes specificity so important in training. Not to interrupt the science lecture, folks, but right around this point was when I was like, this is going to be a massive conditioning session. That right there is a 20 kilometer PR on this particular model of bike. Anyways, moving on. If all you do is squat for sets of 20, you're not going to be the best at triples. And that's a 25k PR. That's also largely a neurological thing, but the tissues are also specifically remodeled to perform better at the tasks that they do most frequently. That's why I'm starting to get some seriously crazy times on these 30k bikes PR today. Boom. I really wanted to break 58 minutes, but I could not go any faster without exceeding zone two. I was right at the cusp. So I found this really dope image of a muscle cell and the little purple guys are actually nuclei running to the damaged area, which you can see looks kind of like a tear in a rope. And those little nuclei are basically like memory cards for the coding of specific proteins that will repair that muscle so that it is more resilient to whatever activity caused that damage. So this is what's going on inside your body in real life right now. Pretty cool, huh? Now, this activity that you see here isn't the only thing that's going on behind the scenes to repair your muscles because you can't Fill in the damaged area with new tissues until you clean out that damaged area first. So one of the other signals that is triggered when the muscle damage occurs are for all these immune cells to get riled up. And there's a whole bunch of little guys that come to play. Some are there to fight bacteria, but others are there to gobble up all the frayed ends. So that once the area is nice and tidy, then we can move in and actually fix it. Yeesh, 538, that's gonna be hard to beat. So some of those little guys have these little guys inside those little guys. These guys are called lysosomes. And what lysosomes are is they're basically your recycling. They gobble up all the damaged frays, if you will, which essentially are pieces of muscle, which essentially are proteins which essentially are amino acids and then they can take some of those amino acids and deposit them in your free amino acid pool so that at some point you can utilize them for other things so you kind of have multiple things going on here right you have your basic immune function that would occur whether it's you know a muscle strain working out getting stabbed getting blown up whatever there's damage that's occurred that number one needs to be fixed and number two we have to make sure that that damage doesn't allow uh, any invaders to further compromise your survivability so like bacteria viruses things like that and then there's the repair process which involves potentially reprogramming the new tissue 
that we're assigning to that position to be more amenable to the activity that caused the damage in the first place, assuming that it's training related, which is the context that we're speaking about now. So is it important to understand all of that science? No. I think it's pretty cool, but you don't need to understand all that science. What you do need to understand though, is that that stuff, number one, takes time, the extent of which is commensurate to the amount of damage that you've incurred. And number two, that process is not free. Besides the time component, there is a massive energy cost. This is why number one, I'm not a big fan of completely eliminating carbohydrates. And number two, I'm also not the biggest fan of drastically reducing your calories on non-training days. Because guess when all that stuff happens? It ain't when you're in the gym, folks. It's called recovery for a reason. And the harder you're able to train, the greater your level of fitness, the more you're able to damage yourself and the greater that recovery cost is going to be. We talked about Pat Casey in a previous video. He was famous for these crazy marathon workouts and apparently he did a seven or eight hour dip workout that took him two weeks to recover from. You're like, two weeks? That's crazy. I've only ever been sore for a couple of days. Well, yeah, but remember, Pat Casey at that time was one of the strongest humans on the planet. This energy cost, particularly of the immune response portion of recovery, is why a lot of particularly strength and combat sport athletes peaking for or shortly after a meet or a fight oftentimes get really sick because their immune system has to pull double duty. It's got to repair all the damage from the fight or from the lift and it still has to cover down on the day-to-day, -day, keeping you from catching a cold when you're at the airport or something, while having less energy to do so because you just had a fight or just lifted something super heavy. So hopefully this kind of puts the recovery process in context for you to help you better map out your training and nutrition so you can integrate it holistically into your day-to-day -day life to obtain the superpower that is consistency so you can stay in the fight. Thanks for watching.